It's the Panthers defenders. This one is a pick 'em right down the middle. Some shops you can find Michigan as a short one point road favorite. Total sitting at 43. Forecast for the district looks like 66 and partly cloudy for game time with a slight chance of showers. So finally, we can talk a little bit about this Greg Williams defense again. I feel like we haven't got to do that really this season. And, and you know, you always hear the, the phrase being in midseason form. And I, I really think that applies here to Greg Williams. Um, they played lights out last Sunday against San Antonio. Really not many defenses have been able to force A.J. Smith off his game. And, and he just was running the ball, running the ball, pounding it. They did it 30 times. And, and that's not a winning strategy for an air raid offense. So D.C. kind of uglies the game up, right? That's the theme. That, that's what they want to do. They slow the game down. They kind of turn it into a rock fight, and it works. It worked last year. Uh, and Thula Kelly sets the tone early with the interception on the first drive. Later on, D.C. gets a fumble recovery. They had six tackles for loss. Really great game. I thought the secondary stepped up, and they didn't have starting corner Gary and Conley. Michael Joseph is all the way back, leading the UFL in tackles. What a performance on Sunday. 11 solo, a TFL, and a forced fumble. Just a massive day from 15. He's a D.C. legend. So I think that defense can keep it rolling. When we talk about this Michigan game, what worries me the most about the Michigan Panthers is the run balance. They are very comfortable running the ball. I think more so than San Antonio. They have Wes Hills, Matt Colburn, great backfield, dual threat at quarterback with Danny Etling, and they run it 49% of the plays. So you look at some of the, the run pass balance, a lot of these teams have sort of gotten off balance. San Antonio throws it a little too much. I think the last couple weeks they've been forced to run it. Arlington throws it way too much. Uh, you want to get to that run balance, right? That's what St. Louis is trying to do. That's what D.C. is trying to do, and Michigan has done that. Um, we've seen D.C.'s defense struggle against the run at points this season. They give up over 110 yards a game, which is seventh in the league. But I think it's the same strategy for Greg Williams. Make Danny Etling beat you with his arm. Last week, San Antonio, not a single pass completion over 15 yards. If they can do that again, this is going to be a win. Michigan is known for their explosive plays. Marcus Sims, only receiver in the UFL with over 20 yards per catch. He's a big-time threat in this pass game. So, really, it's limit the big plays, force those third and longs that this defense can feast in, Get to the quarterback. Michigan has given up 20 sacks this year. That's second highest in the league. So I give the edge to the D.C. defense. I've, I've really been seeing some inspired play since that big letdown against St. Louis. I think they put a full 60 minutes on the field against San Antonio. And, and you think about some of the guys on this defensive front, like a Derek Roberson. He's one of the UFL leaders in sacks. Been a pleasant surprise. You know, you think about a guy like Anthony Hines at linebacker. And then in the secondary, Anthula Kelly, like we said, with a huge pick. Uh, DeAndre Baker stepped up with Gary on Conley being out. Um, DJ Swearinger gets cut, and all of a sudden, Santos Ramirez now is going gonna, is gonna to lead that safety room. They sign Kentrell Bryce to come back on, but like Monte Nicholson is a guy in the defensive backfield who they recently got back who I was impressed with. Not a lot of teams have been all that effective against San Antonio's pass game. Uh, you know, I think Dormady was just, I mean, he looked way worse in that game against D.C. than he did last year with Orlando. So let's turn it around to the D.C. offense against the Michigan defense. Um, really the same story for both of these units last week. Not their best performances, but really enough to get the job done, right? Which is all that matters. Uh, 18 points for D.C. offensively. Bunch of field goals in there. Matt McCrane, you're a legend. You got my vote for first team all UFL kicker. I know people are going to say I'm nuts and I'm biased. Yeah, I am. I love Matt McCrane. Big game McCrane. But Jordan thrived in the fourth quarter to put the game away. And a point that Zook made on the show last week was when your team gets in these situations, can DC pull these out? And I think the fourth quarter against San Antonio was a good example of Jordan taking over the game. 
Um, it was the same thing for Michigan. Their defense had a rough day. I, I still think they got away with that offsides at the end. Um, but ultimately, they're able to get the offense, the ball back late and, and really and win that game. So, so two kind of resilient units who faced some adversity last week now meeting each other. Um, what do we think of D.C.'s run game? I think it's coming along a little bit. And, and, and it's way behind schedule from Abram Smith who I think had 800 yards rushing in 10 games last season. But, you know, the bar was set maybe a little too high. I don't need them to be Abram Smith. I just need them to do enough in the run game to win. They went over 100 for the first time all year, and they had some shifting around in the offensive line that might have made that possible. Um, New offensive line coach Sean Kugler, what a situation he stepped into. And first week, they go over 100 yards rushing for the first time all season. And Michigan has been super tough against the run. So I'm sure Sean Kugler has been in the film room in his second week as a coach trying to figure out this defense. Um, Michigan's second in the league against the run. D.C. has a committee backfield, but I think that committee will get a bunch of looks early as D.C. tries to get back to their bread and butter that they've sort of got out of this season. Um, I love watching Jordan on third and long, but you got to get in front of the sticks. You, you can't be backed up to third and 14 and make Jordan pull some magic out in this game. Uh, a couple of injury notes. Panthers took two huge blows to that defense the last two weeks. Two weeks ago was their best interior defensive lineman, Daniel Wise. Now their captain, linebacker Frank Ginda. Uh, Coach Mike Nolan said he's potentially out for the year. So some adversity here. I expect Jordan to go over 50 yards rushing. I think you'll see him scrambling away from some pressure because the Panthers do have Breland Speaks, who's a hell of a pass rusher. Um, he has four and a half sacks, six TFLs, and it could be a problem. But don't forget about 13 in red. Kelvin Harmon, the clear wide receiver one, becoming a star in the UFL. I think they might actually be relying on him a little too much. I look at some of the target share. Kelvin Harmon with 40 targets. The second guy on that list. Less than double that. So you're talking about Chris Rowland being the second receiver in this offense and has 20 targets compared to Kelvin Harmon with 40. So D.C. needs a second option, and that's clearly not Brandon Smith. It's not Kiki QT, um, which we thought it would be. So it's Rowland and Ty Scott. Those are the guys that are going to have to step up in games like this. Uh, D.C. offense, Michigan defense, no real edge on this side of the ball either way. I see a very typical game from D.C., solid in the red zone, but they've got to figure out these PATs, 2 of 12, and and they're throwing it every single time. They haven't even tried to run the ball or or tried to go for one. Like, we have to fix that. You're leaving points on the board in these close games. But it is that Greg Williams defense yet again for me here, Zook. D.C., back-to-back wins to get back into this playoff race, and I think it will be a close game. Who you got, buddy? This may surprise you, but I got DC winning. I, I'm loving the way this week is going so far. We are on the same page, firing on all cylinders. I know, but sometimes that's not good what for us. What could go wrong? 